God's Word is a Bible study for women. Each month, your host, Cindy Colley, will discuss the study highlights and answer some of your questions. You can find more information about the Digging Deep Bible Study at thecolleyhouse.org. Now let's grab our shovels and dig into the meat of God's Word. It's very close. It's improving. So. Yeah. Good evening and welcome to the April edition 2018 Great Escapes Digging Deep Study. We're so glad that you are with us tonight. We are very excited about talking about the importance of work and ingenuity as we are attempting to escape the wiles of the devil. Very happy to have Holly Smith Thank with you. us tonight. Holly is no stranger to you all. You, um, I think, Holly, you were telling me one time that as you travel and go to lectureships <laughs> and things, people say, oh, I know oh, you. Oh, yeah. Hey, how are you? You're a dick and dick. Well, yeah. <laughs> so we are so glad that you're here again. Here, uh, Harrison and Darcy are mm -hmm. Holly's children. Mm -hmm. And um, Derek is her husband, mm -hmm. and they are very faithful members at the West Hunts Huntsville Church of Christ. We are so blessed by their whole family. I constantly, <laughs> I mean, I love them all, but um, Harrison makes me laugh the most. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we are um, especially glad. Tell us about what your what your latest big program is at West Huntsville. I know. Oh, it's, dear. I don't know I'm talking about the deaf. Oh. <laughs> Tell us about that. Oh, um, my husband and I... Um, uh, we have a deaf work here at West Huntsville. My husband and I have been um, taking sign language for um, a year and a half. And, and they're very we adept. Are, um, they're good. We're starting to interpret some of them. Yeah. It's and been fun. Derek been is fun. actually interpreting uh, pretty often in yeah, his service now. Yeah, he's doing a lot of the songs. So you will and, see her husband mm -hmm. in our live stream mm -hmm. down in the little mm -hmm. corner picture yep. doing that. Mm -hmm. And then Holly is, I've been seeing you on Wednesday night mm -hmm. in the ladies class. Right a lot doing mm -hmm. that and um, plus people will look at you women will look at you during the service and yeah. have little questions yeah. and you're I know y'all are talking during the service but well you know but it's not disturbing and it's and you're helping them yes. so anyway we are uh, very glad that Holly is with us tonight and we are not going to take very much more time I do want to go ahead and tell you that for May the podcast will be on Tuesday the 29th we're going to scoot it up a little bit for June. It will be on the 19th of June. Uh, some conflicts going on there. So um, be prepared for the 29th of May and the 9th of June. And really, isn't it amazing that when we get past June, we're mm -hmm. almost time for a new yes, book? Yes. I mean, yes, it won't be very long I until know. August then. It's crazy. So, yeah, it's gone by very quickly. We're going to start with a prayer, and then we're, we're going to dig right into our okay. study. Help me, please. We thank you, Lord, so much for the opportunity to get together um, in different groups and also on the podcast every month to study your word and learn, learn more about your word and implement the things that we learn into our lives and our Christian lives and to, into our families. And we thank you so much, Lord, for this study. And um, we pray that everyone who has studied this month will be able to use these things practically and put them into their, into their Christian lives and be better servants for you. We thank you so much for all of the ladies who are involved in doing this study, and we thank you for Cindy for um, putting together this study each year, and we pray that you will be with her as she is um, writing the next study for next year, and we pray that that will go well, and um, we thank you so much for the Christian um, the, all of our congregations and just Christianity in general and we thank you for that we can all be sisters even though we are not physical sisters we are spiritual sisters and we thank you so much for that bond that we have and that um, we can lean on each other um, even when we don't know each other very very well and we thank you so much for that bond that we are able to share we pray that you'll be with Cindy and I tonight as we go through this study and that the things that we bring out will be practical and help each and every one who is watching tonight and who will watch later. And we thank you so much for your um, the world that you've made for us, the beauty that surrounds us. And we thank you especially for heaven and for your son who made, who made it possible that we can go to heaven and be with you eternally. And we thank you so much for um, all of your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. 
The very basis of our study this year is 1 Corinthians 10, 13, the essence of which is that there will not be a temptation that we will not be able to escape because every temptation is common to man, has mm -hmm. always been common to man, and God will, with the temptation, provide a, an, a way of escape that we may be able to bear it. That's a wonderful promise. I was talking to Hannah on the way over here. We're speaking together this weekend about my favorite uh, promises of the New Testament. I love Romans 8, 28. I love Matthew 6, 33. I love... First um, Peter 5, 7. I love James 1, 5. There's just some amazing um, go-to promises. Mm -hmm. and, and our God, as we've talked about so often, is the only one who can really uh, make a promise in the past tense. Right. And it, it doesn't matter if it's already happened or not. Heaven hasn't happened yet for me. Mm -hmm. But I know that it's going to happen for me. I'm positive that it's going to happen for me unless I mess it up. Right. Because God is faithful and he can promise something he can say to his people of Israel, for instance, I've given you Jericho. Mm -hmm. And that means that nothing's happened yet. They hadn't even started marching yet. Right. But God's promises are sure. He can make a promise in, uh, before anything ever happens, and it is. He can say, I've already done it. Um, so before we go into um, the, the meat of what's in the book, I did want us to talk just for a minute because... I can't pass through a chapter that's about working and escaping through our own, uh, of course, always by the grace of God and with his amazing, in his amazing plans. But I couldn't talk about working to obtain an escape without talking about the great controversy that exists in the religious world today about works and do works even play a part in our salvation. So I wanted to just uh, briefly talk about how that, uh, you know, in the world, no one who is in the, in the big, under the big umbrella of Christendom would ever argue mm -hmm. that a person doesn't have to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God mm -hmm. in order to access salvation. That's pretty, um, a pretty unanimous uh, mm -hmm. consent to that premise mm -hmm. that we must believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he came to the earth and died on the cross. So is belief a work? It is. Belief is a work. And Holly, let's turn and look at First Thessalonians 1, verse 3, and read that. <clears throat> Remembering before our God and Father, your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. So faith is a work. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. And then um, 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 11. We're going to just reiterate that there. To this end, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power. So there we have belief or faith equals a work. Mm -hmm. And then we have Jesus saying it, I believe, in John 6. Verse 29, Jesus is answering here. Um, actually, the question here is, is really forthright in verse mm -hmm. 28. They said, what shall we do that we might, oh, we got it twice here, mm -hmm. work the works of God. And so Jesus answered saying what? And Jesus answered them, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. So... Um, they said, verse 30, then they said, therefore, to him, what sign are you showing us that we may see and believe? What does, what do you work? So we're in a, in a whole conversation here about working, and, and we have a, a straight statement from Jesus that this is the work of God that you believe. So it's very important that we don't draw that line between faith and works all the time because faith is a mm -hmm. work, clearly, mm -hmm. according to these passages. And we must work that work of faith in order to access salvation. So it's necessary. Repentance is also something that requires work. We can't repent without working mm -hmm. and we that's read about the that work, the hardest work yeah of that's all. the hardest work of all and in acts twenty six twenty, we and many other passages mm -hmm. we we have that referred to but declared first to those in damascus then in jerusalem and throughout all the region of judea and also to the gentiles that they should repent and turn to god performing deeds or works in keeping with their repentance 
Okay, so he's talking here about um, keeping, uh, I want you to read that, in keeping with their repentance mm -hmm. that they might turn and work the works yes. of God. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, repentance requiring works, belief is a work, and I, I really, um, I in my small circle of of religious friends. I don't know of anybody who doesn't believe that we must turn from sin, that we must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and turn from sin. Mm -hmm. And yet some of those same friends would say, but we can't do anything that's a work. We right. can't accept, access salvation by a work. Well, it's very important to realize that faith mm -hmm. is a work mm -hmm. and that repentance is a work. And in the same way, of course, our burial with him in baptism is a work. I was uh, listening to, I think you're going to quote in a little bit from B.J. Clark, mm -hmm. but I was listening to him mm -hmm. earlier on the PTP thumb drive, and I was listening to a lesson about, um, about um, John 3, 16, uh, For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in mm -hmm. him should have access to salvation or to mm -hmm. life everlasting. And he was speaking with a woman, and she said, there's no water, there's no baptism in that verse. It just says, he who believes. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, as I'm recalling, BJ, uh, oh, he was just so kind to her, but he said, but, but we have to read the chapter. Mm -hmm. And there's the upper part of that chapter is already soaking wet <laughs> because Jesus had just said to Nicodemus that mm -hmm. it takes the spirit and water mm -hmm. baptism mm -hmm. to in order for salvation to occur so I want us to just be really careful that we're honest with the scriptures mm -hmm. that we don't um, make a blanket statement that would say we can't access salvation by any work mm -hmm. like baptism when the scriptures do clearly say mm -hmm. that faith and repentance are works as well. And then James, we have to remember James, and some of the Calvinists uh, threw the book of James out as an epistle of straw, mm -hmm. I think they said, mm -hmm. because it is so works mm -hmm. emphatic, I guess right. is how mm -hmm. I would say that, and um, does have the statement that you are saved by mm -hmm. works. And so um, that'd be a great assignment for all of you. Find me that verse in James because it's, it's right there and it will jump out at you um, that um, we are, we do have to work out our own salvation. Mm -hmm. And so, so just at the get-go here, I want to just say that um, we, we cannot, we have to be fair with the scriptures and understand that works is a part of the plan of salvation. Does that negate the grace of God? No. Not in any way. Give me an Old Testament example of somebody who had to work in order to well, escape. Noah had to work to escape the oh, waters. Oh, yeah, but you know Noah came off that boat yeah. and said, look what I did. Right. Look what I did. No, he didn't. No, he understood <laughs> fully mm -hmm. all the way to mm -hmm. the bottom of his soul. Well, I mean, it said that he did all that God commanded. I mean, he had to do some things and to be saved. And at the same saved. time, Noah found Grace, grace in the and eyes of the Lord. Lord. So grace mm -hmm. and Noah's work, he mm -hmm. did all that God commanded him to do. They went hand in hand, and mm -hmm. together, mm -hmm. that was his escape route. I think about, uh, oh, you can think about lots, Naaman. Mm -hmm. You can think about Naaman. Mm -hmm. And Naaman didn't want to do the right work. No, he didn't. He didn't want to do the work, and he said, what are you telling me? I've got to do something? Because he just expected mm -hmm. a zap. Just, yeah. and, um, and God made it very plain to Naaman that the dipping seven times in the River Jordan, that specific mm -hmm. river, not Abana and Farpar, mm -hmm. but that specific river mm -hmm. was going to be his escape route from his leprosy. Right. And so when he came up out of that water, Naaman said, I was, look what I, look what I did. Right. This was not anything about a gift from God. He didn't do that. No. In fact, he sent a servant mm -hmm. to express some gratitude mm -hmm. and see what he could mm -hmm. offer. Um, grace and works are not exclusive of one another in God's plan of salvation. And so that is preliminary to any study about our own ingenuity and work. Let mm -hmm. me just say this very clearly. When we talk about our ingenuity and work, we do not by one whit 
diminish the grace of God. I would never, ever say or encourage anyone Mm -hmm. to say, well, I submitted to God in baptism, so I worked my way to heaven. Mm -hmm. That is Mm -hmm. just so far from being true. And yet it is um, pompous, boastful for me to try to circumvent this will of God Mm -hmm. and to say that I can be saved without doing the Mm -hmm. works that God requires of me. That would be a pompous and boastful Mm -hmm. thing to say. All right. Having said all of that, um, Holly, in our class that we have here locally, she brought a quote from, again, (laughs) B.J. Clark that I thought was very good introductorily um, for this study. Will you share that with us? Um, At PTP Spark, um, he did a lesson about the parable of the ten virgins, and he... um, he made and the a, ten virgins are, virgins are right before right are the right before of the, talents. the talents. And if you go back and look who he was speaking to, um, chapter twenty four, he was speaking to um, his disciples, and they came to him privately. So these were people that were with him all the time. And um, BJ made the point that um, these people were doing the right thing already. They were. They were good Christian people, and they were doing... Well, they, they weren't were, Christians Well, that's right. Yet. They weren't Christians yet. They were disciples, and they were doing exactly what they were supposed to he be doing. He wasn't talking to the scribes and Pharisees no. here. He was, he was talking, talking to about disciples people, right, who were already who following. Who were already following him and came to him. And um, he said that... He said, you know, these were people that were doing the right thing. But here we have the ten virgins, and, you know... He made the point that everybody has to be ready, even people who think they're doing good, you know, and they're, they've got it together. And I think a lot of Christians get into that, into that groove. They feel like, oh, I'm doing the right thing. I'm doing good, you know. But, but we all have to be watchful, just like the ten virgins. And then that follows with the talents. And um, he talked about how, um, you know, that was a, they were watching, that was a war, that was just watching, and then the talents was the working part of what they were supposed to be doing. Exactly, and I think what she's saying here in a, um, a nutshell is that sometimes we think we're in the right group, mm-hmm. and so we're good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were in the right group. They were mm-hmm. disciples. Right. Um, it is individual mm-hmm. watching and individual responsibility. You know, mm-hmm. if, you um, we could look at the parable of yeah, the talents and, not, and say that the master gave talents to the servants. And mm-hmm. so I'm in the group of the servants. I'm good. Right. But some of the servants were good right. and some of the servants were not good, mm-hmm. depending on the individual mm-hmm. use of what was given to them individually. Right. So um, and that's not, what we're going to... It's not a group effort. Right. It's so not. that's what we're going <laughs> to look at here. And we won't stand as a group. Mm-hmm. I, I right. sometimes just really wish... I think I'm a member of a great congregation. Mm-hmm. And I sometimes mm-hmm. really wish that I could just stand... We could just... West Huntsville could just stand go there. Go together. You yeah. know. <laughs> and we are going to go together. <laughs> we are. But... And we're going to go together with you. But... You know, it's not a it's not a group judgment, and um, I, I, so I sometimes wish I have a wonderful husband, and I just wish we could go together mm-hmm. and just be judged together. Mm-hmm. But it is my one talent mm-hmm. that I have been given that I've got to be sure I am not burying, mm-hmm. and my husband doesn't have that talent. My right church family doesn't have that same talent Mm -hmm. is my talent so i have to be sure that i am individually serving so we first off we're going to read that parable of the talents we're not going to read it right now because you've already read it and listen things that are really difficult sometimes we're afraid to invest sometimes we just want to we're afraid we just want to go hide our talent we're going to talk about the reasons for that but some what are some of the hardest hardest things and i hope you'll comment here what are some of the hardest things for us to invest as we try to um, use our talents for him. I'm going to say one and then you say one and let's just take turns. I think um, probably everybody who's watching and who's even thought about this question put time at the top of the list. We are in a, we live in the United States anyway, much more so than in the countries where I go and do mission work. We live in a very busy society. Mm-hmm. We are not laid back about our time. We are watching the clock. And uh, it's very difficult because our time is so precious. It mm-hmm. is so 
it, so much in demand. It's this, it's this law of supply and demand. Right. We don't have any more time. No more time's being made. Mm -hmm. It's not going to, days aren't going to get longer. So the more our commitments collide with our time restraints, the more precious our time is. And time is a, a commodity that's very, very hard to invest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just want to go ahead and say that if you if you if your time is world event heavy rather than God event heavy, you need to do some switching up in your life because mm -hmm. your talent, everybody has the same amount of time. That's a part of the talent that the master gives. And right. so we are required to use that. What's your mm -hmm. what's your first one? Um, well, my first one was time too, but um, my second one is things that are not enjoyable or not comfortable, and I listed a few things under that. Um, if you have a, if your congregation does a van like where people drive the van to go pick up people who can't drive themselves, that is something that's not always enjoyable, and it's very hard to find people to do that. Um, teaching Bible classes sometimes, even for kids or adults. Um, some people don't find that enjoyable, and that doesn't mean you can't do it. And um, nursing home ministries, prison ministries. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm saying more. No, more. that's good. You're anyway, saying that those was, all that under That was all under one line. thing. That's right. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I'll quit there. You go. No, ahead. that's good. My um, <laughs> next one was relationship testing um, things that we have to do, like the Matthew 18 thing, where we, where if, um, you know, where if someone has uh, committed sin against us, mm -hmm. then we need to go to that person and uh, follow a, a Matthew 18 procedure that you can you know easily read about there. I don't want to take time to talk about it, but that's hard to do. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. really a hard thing to do because mm -hmm. sometimes um, it really, really can um, end in temper. Mm -hmm. in relationship strains mm -hmm. in it it that's really and Paul preached about that Sunday mm -hmm. it's really a hard mm -hmm. hard thing to do Galatians 6 1 says it this way you who are spiritual go and restore the one who is erring in the spirit of meekness we have to go with the spirit of meekness knowing it's not about us but that's a really hard thing to do mm -hmm. uh, sometimes though today um, because of a set of circumstances I had to uh, talk to a young lady about uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say what the specific thing was. It was immodesty on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, it was it was pictures that were not appropriate for Christians to post on Facebook. Here's the letter that I just got right before I came here, and I thought, you know, this is encouraging. Thank you again for getting in touch with me. I am so thankful for Christian women like you who are such a great example. Of, no, that's not true. But for other women in our society, I am someone who will definitely take what we talked about today to heart. Thank you for taking time out of your day to talk with me, and thank you for sending me your book. I was going to send her a book so she could study that particular topic. I really appreciate that. I was also wondering which social media app that picture was on, and I'll go take it down. I will definitely take it down, not just because of what we talked about today, but because I know that it isn't right. Thank you. You know what? Sometimes... Uh, when I was approached about talking to this girl, I was like, oh, dear. You know, this is something that's so mm -hmm. hard to do, and I'm probably about to get my nose snipped off and all those things, you know, that I, that you tend to want. To, uh, so I just was tempted to get a napkin and go bury that. You mm -hmm. know, just could you just let somebody else do that? Mm -hmm. You know, but that's a, it's mm -hmm. worth it. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. one time out of ten, mm -hmm. you get this kind of response. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying it doesn't, we do it whether it ends good or not, right. but sometimes it ends good. Right. All right, what's your next one? Um, I had evangelism as a whole, a lot of, and we talked about that some last week, I mean last month, about how, um, what holds people back from evangelizing, and um, I think that's one that people um, hold back from. They think I it's hard. Too. Mm -hmm. I do too. Um, I have money sacrifices. I mm -hmm. think that our money gets to be real precious to mm -hmm. us. And I think, you know, the talents, of course, in this particular passage was that mm -hmm. the talents, I don't know if I should say the talents were money in mm -hmm. this particular passage. Right. But um, I think money is difficult for mm -hmm. many people. I know when my husband served as an elder, he didn't tell me names, but he would get very discouraged at people who lived in fine houses and we read about some mm -hmm. of that like in the book of um, 
Malachi, mm -hmm. where people uh, mm -hmm. were taking care of their own selves, but they were mm -hmm. not um, taking care of the house of God. And and God said they had robbed him in tithes right. and offerings. And I think that that's a parallel to what happens today. And I remember my husband as an elder would become very discouraged with the, the great wealth that uh, some people would have. And just because he had to be mm -hmm. privy, he would know what a pittance was being mm -hmm. given to God. And that right. um, is exactly this mm -hmm. passage that mm -hmm. we're talking about. So mm -hmm. what's your next one? Um, I'm going to say what Nidra Rodriguez has. She made a, made a comment. Offering personal Bible studies, being merciful toward others, patient toward the weak, inviting others into your home. I had um, someone had said hospitality at our... At our um, class last week here and I thought that was really good too and thank the things you that she, Nidra thank the things you that she listed were very good and I had hospitality on my list I had the comfort zone thing on mm -hmm. my list and I had evangelism under that mm -hmm. uh, the big life sacrifices and by that I mean stuff that um you have mm -hmm. to do in your vocation and you're going to have to do it for years and years and mm -hmm. years or stuff that you have to do because of a previous sin and mm -hmm. you're going to have to do it for the rest of your life like perhaps living alone because right. of an ad adultery in an early stage mm -hmm. of your life whatever the big thing is that's uh, and i guess i'm talking about the big long Band mm -hmm. thing. Right. Those things are very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. Before we go on, do we have more comments? Yeah, one more. Jessica Donovan says also motivating um, congregation members to step outside their comfort zones and to do the work of the Lord. So just just general motivation mm -hmm. for other people mm -hmm. is is tough sometimes. Good. And that would uh, encouragement would fall mm -hmm. under that. We we need to encourage mm -hmm. each other more. And the hospitality thing. I think somebody in our uh, mm -hmm. local group mentioned how that we. Um, we think about hospitality as entertaining, and it's way more than that. Yeah. It's ministering to each other, mm -hmm. and our houses don't have to be on display. Mm -hmm. Our living rooms don't mm -hmm. have to be on display. Our couch doesn't have to be new mm -mm. before we have people over, right. and um, and not just have people over, but minister through our kitchens in, in mm -hmm. every way that we can. Um so the next one is sometimes we just hide things rather than dealing with them or cleaning them up to use for him. And we talked about a couple of different ways this can be taken. But it takes a lot of work to confront challenges and rectify troubling situations in our lives. It takes work to use everything we've been given for Jesus' cause. So sometimes we just hide things that are hurtful and we don't bring them up because we think, well, you know, everything's going on mm -hmm. pretty well. Mm -hmm. And if I bring this up, it's going to make a little ripple not really biblical to, there's not a rug in the bible right to sweep things under <laughs> right. and so i'm gonna tell one of mine and okay. then we'll go back and forth and see if the ladies have anything i think uh past sins and we mentioned that uh in reference to the first question but i think sometimes i know some women who have for instance done what is unthinkable to them now and had an abortion mm -hmm. i know some women who are um, completely and in every circumstance hiding that. And I understand some reasons why you wouldn't mm -hmm. broadcast that. Right. But I know some other women who are willing to use that learning experience mm -hmm. to um, help other women when they confront that temptation. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, there's some ways that we can be discreet about past sins, but still use those past sins to um, we we got to confess and make restitution. We right. can't just pretend it didn't happen and never say anything mm -hmm. to those who know it did happen. Mm -hmm. We have to confess and make restitution to the best of our ability. Although we can't bring back a a, a dead child or a, you know some things we mm -hmm. can't do, but to the best of our ability, we take past sins and we confess them, make restitution, grow from them, and help others to avoid them. Mm -hmm. So what's your first one? Or um, I'm going to say one comment real quick. Okay. That, um, just going to the last question. Abigail Derringer says, things that are uncomfortable, like we said, or things that don't come easy for me, I suppose that's fear, fear of failure, like teaching a Bible class or something, a ladies' Bible class or something for the Very first good. time. Very good. I love me some Abby Derringer. They were in our cabin <laughs> recently, and I'm... Um, Thank you for those gifts you left, Abby. That was, that was really um, <laughs> hospitality backwards there. So thank you. Okay. Um, one that I had was just marital problems, and we talked about this in our um, in our class this past week. Um, you know, a lot of people 
will put a lot of things under the rug, which is okay, because some things, you know, you, you really probably don't need to be talking about with other people. But, but if in the future, once you get through those things, you could be a help to someone else who might be going through those things. You know, just there's, I mean, there's a list of those types of things that you could help someone through discreetly. And you, know. you said a whole bunch of those. I'm going to come mm-hmm. back to marriage in a mm-hmm. second, but, but you mm-hmm. said a whole bunch of those in class. You mm-hmm. said, um, so you have mm-hmm. a child who has a disability, yes. or you lose a, a loved one early yes. on, or mm-hmm. what? You had a whole I had, list. well, I had, um, I had, in, regard, in regards member. to family, yeah, losing, um, losing a child, losing a, you know, losing a spouse, um, those who've dealt with non-Christian family members before. Um, people, well, problems with kids, problem with kids, you know, just, just general things that, you know, that you deal with in a family. Um, and we, we talked about adultery and those kinds of things. You said people who move a bunch. Yes, I have that. have anxiety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, all of Mm -hmm. those things are things that, um, we need to go ahead and say, uh, I've done this. Right. So I can, I can can help you you through that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that's good. That's mm-hmm. um, those are the kinds of things we're looking for. Um, I put um, abilities. Oh, I wanted to come back to marriage mm-hmm. because I want to say this. Sometimes it's not um, it's not burying problems between spouses mm-hmm. in the home. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes we just want to pretend that we're married forever, everything's going to be okay, right. and so we're just not going to talk about these things. Mm-hmm. But they're a mess. Right. And then we end up in trouble and, somebody's yeah. tempted to adultery right. or you know problems in a marriage mm-hmm. oh you know bring them to somebody who's older wiser mm-hmm. can can give you advice bring them before right they get to uh, i mean when you first see before them or when late. you think yeah. them and sometimes people will come to uh, glenn and me for instance and say this and this and this is happening in our home, and sometimes we say, "Oh, let's let's do this right now. Let's work mm-hmm. on this right now." And sometimes we say, uh, "They say this and this and this is happening," and we'll say, "Well, that's pretty normal. You know, here's some advice. <laughs> that's probably yeah. going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, but it's always better to say it than not to say it, right. because right. you don't have anything to lose and you have mm-hmm. everything to gain. So don't keep marriage problems right. in the hidden in the dark somewhere." And then I had. Um, Sometimes we hide our abilities. Um, sometimes I've known people who said, well, I could do that, but I'm not going to tell, tell anyone yeah. that I know how to do that. Yeah. Because if I tell anyone that I you know, know how to this. sew, they're yeah. going to want me to come to Dorcas. Or if I tell anyone that I know how, that I used to be a kindergarten teacher, they're going to want me to do the preschool program mm-hmm. or whatever it is. Right. You know? right. So let's just don't let people know. Wait, sometimes mm-hmm. we like to hide our abilities. Mm-hmm. What's your next one? Um, let's see. I think I might have said all mine. Okay, I'll say a few more. Mm-hmm. Ghost in the family closet. I had someone come to me the other day and said, this happened a long time ago in our family, but it never was addressed. And now mm-hmm. we're pretty good. So can we just not address that? Well, if it was a sin, it has to be addressed. Right. Um, ingratitude sometimes. Um, we. I, I had a little girl tell me, well, I, didn't write, I, I needed to write 500 notes for things that people gave me for my wedding and I didn't do it and my wedding was six months ago so I'm just not going to do it that's not good no it's not good. go ahead and do it go ahead and be th- sh- express your gratitude okay do we have comments about that one we do not okay so sometimes we have this unhealthy fear about God we should fear God and keep his commandments mm-hmm. uh, that means respect mm-hmm. that means like your children fear you I wanted my children to fear the consequences of negative behavior Mm -hmm. so that they would, I I think that's very biblical. Mm -hmm. So a fear of God is good. But sometimes we are doing a lot of good and to the best of our ability are serving faithfully, but we become so afraid that we're going to not be, I'm going to quote, good enough. That's mm-hmm. the wrong mm-hmm. kind of salvation by works. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that is the wrong. We've been we were talking about mm-hmm. the kind of works that we're not saved by. Mm-hmm. We can't do. We can't be good mm-hmm. enough. None of us can be good enough. Mm-hmm. So that unhealthy fear of hell, even when I'm faithful, and there are a lot of reasons for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because Holly, if I am doing my very best to be faithful. And somebody else over here is kind of nonchalant about mm-hmm. Christianity. Which one is going to be most touched by the sermon? Mm-hmm. 
Well, you. The one the who's one that's, trying that's to trying be the faithful yeah. is going. The one mm-hmm. that's trying the hardest mm-hmm. is going to be the one who's most touched. That's why mm-hmm. lots of times people who walk down the aisle, you think. Well, that's one of the most faithful people right. in the church. Right. But that person over here hadn't been here in 10 months. Right. You know, why is that? Per- Sometimes that's the mm-hmm. quandary. Mm-hmm. And so um, so sometimes we become fearful and anxious and unsure of our salvation. And so we made a list of things to help people overcome that unhealthy fear. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what was your first one? Uh, my first one was just general study and prayer because I think without those two things, um, you know, a good solid base of those two things that people people get fearful because they don't know. And I think it was Emily um, at, in class. She said, uh, Cliff Goodwin came, I don't know, last year, and he said, you know, if you're unsure of your salvation, read First John through every week. Once a week, read it. And it and it really I mean if you just keep reading that you will be assured of your I salvation and it, you know I, I think a lot of people just don't they don't have the Bible knowledge that they should about that yeah. I, I think probably everyone in our study group and I mm-hmm. love that had mm-hmm. first John um, it's yeah. number mm-hmm. um, let's see it's number five on my mm-hmm. list do a verse by mm-hmm. verse study of first yeah. John and um, then I also had on mine to um, Look through the Psalms and note every verse of assurance. Mm -hmm. And every week put a different one on your refrigerator Mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, reading through Psalm 46. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Be still and know that I'm God. And Mm -hmm. all those promises that are above Mm -hmm. that verse. Right. Um, those who wait on the Lord will mount up with wings like eagles. Mm -hmm. That's Isaiah. But, Mm -hmm. um, you know, we just have a lot of um, a lot of assurance, Mm -hmm. especially from the Psalms. And if you could. um, Choose a different refrigerator verse mm-hmm. each week for a year from the Psalms and read First John mm-hmm. every week. I think you'd just well, had, shore up your assurance. I had a Hosea 4-6 written down, too, because it said that we would be destroyed for lack of knowledge. And, and that's really what it comes down to if you don't have the knowledge that you should. Yeah, and I, I love um, Micah, is it Micah 6-8, where, uh, you know, just walking humbly with mm-hmm. him mm-hmm. and... Um, and doing justice, loving mercy, but just walking humbly with him right. is uh, is that co- daily communication right. that happens with prayer, right. prayer and prayer. Bible study. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. And then I'll do my next one. I had um, one outward focus act of service every day. Mm-hmm. You know, really, sometimes we harp on the fear because we have too much time on our hands, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. especially people who regularly struggle with anxiety and I've been mm-hmm. that person mm-hmm. um sometimes it's it's because we aren't busy doing mm-hmm. uh, I'm I'm talking with a girl extensively right now and on days when she has a plan for God a plan of doing working mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for God she's okay mm-hmm. but on days where there's not something to look forward to that's that's outward service focused um, she falls apart because right. she's going through a very difficult time right. in her life right now. So one act of service every day, something you're working on every single day, mm-hmm. is an amazing antidote for that kind of fear. Mm-hmm. What next? Um, I think someone said this in our class, but I, I'm going to say this because I really, I really thought this was really good. But seek counsel from others, and you know when you're in that situation, don't hot, you know don't keep it all in to yourself. You need to you need to work on it. You know you got. <laughs> No pun exactly. intended, right? Exactly. <laughs> but um, you really have to you have to do what you can do to help the problem. You know, you have to you have to seek out help. And if people don't seek out help, I mean, exactly. You know, they they tend to just cave into themselves. And I had, um, you know, if your uh, spouse is faithful, seek out his help. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's mm-hmm. great marriage communication. Yes. Mm-hmm. If you're um, uh, seek out Titus two women mm-hmm. for help yes. from that because they've probably been there. Yes. I don't. Th- I don't think there's anybody who's really tried to walk faithfully to God who hasn't had doubts mm-hmm. at times oh, yeah. and said, "I don't think I can do this." Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, I have. You have right. probably. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know. Mm-hmm. So let's reach out to it's each other normal. and say, and people, "Where people don't think it is." Yeah. You know, 
you know, people don't think that people, other people have dealt with what they're de dealing with. Exactly. And, it's, and really, that's that comes from everybody keeping it all inside, too, yeah. and not telling, you know, certain things. And like it's not like that the we're last question. Ever saying, don't fix it. If you have right. unforgiven sin, fix mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Because that's the freedom from guilt. Mm -hmm. But the anxiety after fixing it is, um, and somebody said this in class, and I've just said this for all of my life, is when we start doubting. First, first John, when we mm -hmm. start doubting that and when we start second guessing our salvation, when we are living faithfully, mm -hmm. we are indicting the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We are saying it's not really big enough for me to right. overcome my guilt. Right. And we got to just decide, you know, I'm going to trust that blood. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. am going to trust that blood and live right. But I know I won't be perfect. Right. And so when I mess up, I'm going to, you know, apologize, get back up and mm -hmm. go again and be assured mm -hmm. that that is the, the road to heaven. You know, someone mm -hmm. says paved with good intentions. The road to mm -hmm. heaven is really paved with lots of mistakes and right. lots of getting up. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. um, that's important to know. What What's your next one? Um, I had also, I had writing cards to people. Sometimes, even for me, it's easier to write what I want to say to someone than it is to talk to them face to face. And so you have time to think about it and such. So I, um, I just said to maybe, you know, write a card every week and then write two cards every week. And just with that, you, you, you make a, a good friendship. Very good. I'm going to go ahead and throw out my uh, three here. And, and then if you have more mm -hmm. or if they have mm -hmm. more, you can let me know. I said, make a text group. I know several women who are in the text group, um, about a specific subject, a textbook mm -hmm. about, I mean, a text group um, on the phone about um, child discipline. Mm -hmm. And so they're sending each other what they found that works mm -hmm. and biblical mm -hmm. Bible verses, right. and they're helping each other. And there, some, some of these groups have some 40-year-old moms with some 20-year-old moms. Mm -hmm. And so it's very informative and mm -hmm. very good. A text group about this would be good, mm -hmm. about... Uh, how we overcome guilt and fear of God when we're living faithfully. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, there's, there's little rules. Mm -hmm. You can send one each mm -hmm. day because mm -hmm. we don't want to overwhelm each other. We, we're, we're doing yeah. stuff while we're, we're studying. We're digging deep. Right. We're doing all that. But you can send one a day, and um, you can comment on one day or whatever. Mm -hmm. But everybody must send at least one a week mm -hmm. because that way mm -hmm. we keep on feeling right. the accountability to right. encourage each other. So that's an idea. Ask your preacher for lessons on freedom from this kind of fear because he's in the Word, and if he's worth his salt, he's in the mm -hmm. Word, and he would be able to address that and help not just you but a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Um, ask the elders to pray for you. I think that's a, I, I hope you have elders who are very accessible. We do. Mm -hmm. And um, I uh, communicate with at least one of them nearly every week. And I do it, you know, you can ask them in a text. Mm -hmm. Will you take this to the elders meeting and tell them I'm really struggling with this? And mm -hmm. will y'all pray for me? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. those people will usually get a I know, note the mail. Mm -hmm. from the yeah. elders saying, mm -hmm. we prayed for you in our mm -hmm. meeting. Mm -hmm. And that's very encouraging and very mm -hmm. reassuring. Mm -hmm. So what else do you have or what else do they um, have? I had, um, nobody else has anything else. But um, I had... Um, under the the unhealthy fear and just you know caving into yourself and not being outward you know not doing things that you should um i put fellowships down because i think a lot of people um you know to use the phrase they're just pew fillers you know they just they come to worship and they leave and they don't they don't involve themselves to be encouraged they can't encourage other people so to to get involved in fellowships and such like that, like mm -hmm. pick one extracurricular month, you know? things, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or because I feel like people who aren't involved, they they slide off to the side without mm -hmm. anybody knowing. You know? Yeah. Well, how would you feel if you were um, if one of your children just started not ever wanting to come to the table right. and eat with you? Right. Right. You know? Yeah. Right. That is where the mm -hmm. nourishment happens, mm -hmm. and that is mm -hmm. where also the communication mm -hmm. happens, and so right. Uh, I'd say that there's probably a lot more um, accountability, mm -hmm. actually, probably in fellowship than mm -hmm. in worship, mm -hmm. because that's where we talk to each too, other yeah. about mm -hmm. our lives, and mm -hmm. we say, "Really, you did that? Well, what mm -hmm. what did you think about this?" You we get, get to that know chance, people, you know? yeah, yeah, to talk. 
So sometimes we make excuses, and uh, so I ask us to uh, put some passages that, and, and in this case, the uh, one talent man blamed God. I was, mm-hmm. you know, I knew you were mm-hmm. a hard master. And so I ask us to put some passages that um, would make us know that it's not God's fault when mm-hmm. we hide our talents. And and mine are 1 Corinthians ten thirteen, our baseline mm-hmm. passage. God's not in the tempting business. He is in the delivering business. And we know that from that passage. And I think everybody in there put Mm-hmm. Um, James one thirteen. Yeah, James mm-hmm. one thirteen, which says that um, God cannot tempt any man. He mm-hmm. is not um, tempted by evil, neither can he tempt any man. Mm-hmm. And then today I added uh, Jeremiah twenty nine, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven to thirteen. Let's see if I can flip there real quick. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, and that's twenty nine. Said find New Testament passages. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm the world worst about not, not doing that. <laughs> a New Testament passage. This is an Old Testament passage. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to get to you. When we get over there on Moab and all oh, that, no, decisions, sure, sure. it said decisions. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Jeremiah 29, uh-huh. verses 11 to 13. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, and not of evil, to give you a hope in the end. Then shall you call on me, and you shall go and pray to me, and I will hearken to you, and you will seek me and find me when you will search for me with all your heart. Mm-hmm. You know, God is not in the I'm going to trip you up business. Mm-hmm. He is He is in it because he wants peace for us, and mm-hmm. he wants hope for us. And that's not in the New Testament. <laughs> okay. So then it says, are any any comments? Um, no. Sometimes we're wicked or lazy or both. And I really wanted to just cut to the core here. Uh, God knows what you can handle. He's not going to give mm-hmm. you more than you can handle. Mm-hmm. That's our verse. Um, you did a dig a bit about this one. Yeah, you? and I did a dig a bit mm-hmm. about this one. So we won't spend a lot of time on it, but um, it says one or two reasons that we are given for having a good work ethic in First Thessalonians 4, 11 and 12. And they are that you may walk honestly toward them who are without, those mm-hmm. who are not members of the church, mm-hmm. and that you may have lack of nothing. So what that really means is out of the church, people are going to look at you and they are knowing that you're treating each other right and you're going to treat everybody right. Mm -hmm. And so the church will be honored and exalted. The Lord will be in that way. And secondly, that you may have lack of nothing. So you're not going to, Christians are not going to be willfully dependent on the state. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be willfully dependent on (laughs) the church. They are going to be people who, um, you know, aren't going to aren't going to go into the boss and say I quit mm-hmm. unless they've got another job, mm-hmm. you know, or unless their work is dishonorable. They're they're gonna they're gonna have that work ethic, um, and I defined those words there. So I would encourage you to, you know, if you have questions about that one, to listen to the dig a bit that we posted on that. We also posted a dig a bit on number six, mm-hmm. the proverbs. Um, I'm going to go ahead now, though, and just rapid fire, say where the verses are. You can add one if I skip one. I'm going to rapid fire give you the citations so that you can add them to your list if you don't already have them. I didn't give the citations on the dig a bit, but I would go ahead and encourage you to listen to it because it was just amazing to me that I could read for 15 minutes or so. <laughs> I can't remember how much. Just read yeah. just, just about those verses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, about laziness mm-hmm. from the book of Proverbs. Okay, so I have uh, chapter 6, verses 6 through 11. Chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. 10, 16. 10, 26, 12, 11, 12, 14, 12, 24, 12, 27, 13, 4, and 11, 14, 4, and 23, chapter 15, verse 19, chapter 16, verse 26, Chapter 18, verse 9. Chapter 19, verses 15 and 24. Chapter 20, verse 4. Chapter 20, verse 13. Chapter 21, verse 5. 
verses 25 and 26 of chapter 21. Chapter 22, verse 13 and verse 29. Chapter 24 is verse 27 and verses 30 through 34. Chapter 26 is 13 through 16. Chapter 27 is verse 18. Chapter 27, verses 23 through 27. Chapter 28, verses 19 through 22. And chapter 30, verses 24 to 28. Now I know in chapter 31, we have the virtuous woman, and all those verses are not about laziness. But in the commendation of her, we read so much about a great work ethic that I wanted to include those as well. Chapter 31, verses, uh, especially <clears throat> verses 10, and then verses 13 through 31. Yeah, I had, so, written, I had written down that Proverbs, you know, is full, full of these, mm -hmm. full of these verses. They're and everywhere. Then it's just interesting that it ends with the virtuous woman yeah. who is not lazy and at all. And it makes that very clear. She has mm -hmm. no need because she burns the midnight oil. Right. She, her children rise up and call her blessed. They are clothed with, and all mm -hmm. those commendations are of necessity a condemnation of being slothful. Then we got to the book of Ruth, and uh, we were listing decisions that were made ahead of time. Now, what is significant about about the birth of Ruth's baby in the grand scheme of things? Oh, he was in the line of Christ. Yeah, okay, so mm -hmm. Ruth's going to have this baby mm -hmm. who's going to be the ancestor mm -hmm. of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So God's providence is a is at work here and it's amazing that we're going to have this woman who was a Moabite mm -hmm. not even an Israelite who's going to be um, because of some very difficult circumstances in her life and mm -hmm. her work ethic in response to those circumstances she's going to be introduced to um, be in the lineage of the Messiah that's mm -hmm. just incredible to me and so I ask you to list uh, the decisions that were made um, and I know there's a whole lot of things that really wouldn't classify as maybe decisions, but Holly, go ahead and if, do you have the passages with mm -hmm. yours? You do, I don't do. you? Okay. Mm -hmm. And we both started with one, one, which was the move to Moab in the first place. Mm -hmm. That was a decision that without which this baby would have never been born. This line of the Messiah would have had to go a different way. Right. So what else did you have? Just, let's just list them quickly. All right. I had one, four, she married Malon. Had one six, Naomi decided to go back home. One ten, fourteen, and sixteen through seventeen, that she decided Ruth decided to stay with Naomi. Verse eighteen, Naomi didn't refuse her to go back. Mm -hmm. Two two, Ruth went to glean the fields of Boaz. Two seven, Ruth gleaned all day. And then in verse twenty three, she it also says that she stayed all day. She stayed in his fields in the Boaz's whole time. Field, right. right, she didn't go into any other field. 2, 8 through 9 says Boaz told her to stay in his fields. I have and then, 2, 8 and 9, mm -hmm. 13 yeah, and, 15 and 15 and 16, 16. Yeah. are all encouraging Boaz, making right. the decision to keep encouraging her to glean in his field. Okay? Right. And then 2, 11, um, 10, 11 and chapter 3, 11, Ruth's good decisions were made known. Mm -hmm. And then 2, 12, Boaz commends her for her work. 214, she um, he asked her to mealtime. 222, Naomi encouraged her, encourages the decision to stay with Boaz. Mm -hmm. Three, one through four, she makes the plan to go to the threshing floor. And then in verses six and seven, she actually goes. And then verse nine also talks about that. 310, um, there was a good reaction out of Boaz. He accepted the responsibility. Uh, 3, 12 through 14, the honorable decision of Boaz. And then, um, let's see, I have, I have some more. Hold on. <laughs> I ran out of room. Okay, um, 3, 18 um, tells Ruth to wait. That's Boaz telling her to wait. 4, 1 through 6, Boaz approached this decision with honor. He, um, he took the time and effort to do it properly. Verse 6, um, that other guy. The other guy, yeah. The other guy chose not to redeem her. Mm -hmm. And then 4, 9 through 10, Boaz buys the field and receives Ruth. And then 4, 13, they get married. So all of those decisions were mm -hmm. in the back of 
what was going to happen to Ruth. I'm speaking, I think I'm going to speak this weekend about Naomi and um, particular decisions that she made. And I just want to go ahead and say this here. She came back very bitter. Mm -hmm. She came back as somebody who was ready to dig in the ground and put the talent there. (laughs) But then she figured out a plan, Mm -hmm. a work Mm -hmm. to do, Mm -hmm. a plan to work. And by the end of the uh, book, she is not bitter, but she's better. And so um, if we, you know, I know that there's some people listening who are going through some extremely difficult times in your life. I just want to encourage you to decide that you're going to work, that you're going to reach into the lives of other people for God's purposes. And you will be amazed at how Mm -hmm. the bitterness can sometimes turn into better. Read 1 Samuel 25. We're going to quickly do this one because so much of the explanations are given in the book here. But it says, uh, look at Abigail and uh, highlight from these excerpts that are in your book instances of resolve, that's deciding, and what's the other word? Ingenuity. <laughs> ingenuity. She had trouble saying that one in our in our class, so I'm giving her a hard time. But resolve and ingenuity. You looked mm-hmm. that up, and you said that was being just being clever with it's how you thinking do things. of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, making mm-hmm. a plan cleverly. So uh, instances of resolve and ingenuity on the part of Abigail. So I'm just gonna, I highlighted she had the food prepared. Mm-hmm. You know, it says mm-hmm. in there that if it had been me, it would have taken a long, long time mm-hmm. to prepare that food. I, I've, I was going to take some food to some people this weekend, and, um, you know, I, I've still got to go to the grocery store and get some <laughs> right. of the ingredients that I need right. for that. I mm-hmm. put the meat out already in the refrigerator, but then I thought, okay, I need to go get some more ingredients. Mm-hmm. So, um, But she had the food prepared because it all happened, like, in a few hours there with her. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then number two... She had a speech ready, and she went face down to do that speech. So she just cleverly had something to say. She Mm -hmm. knew what she was going to say, and she went down on the ground to say it when Mm -hmm. she ended up in front of David. Um, She cleverly decided uh, not to excuse her vulgar husband, but to take full responsibility to say that he is what his name means, Mm -hmm. which is foolish, base, villainous. Um, and then she she did set herself apart from her husband and say to David, I am not part of that plan. I'm not part of the foolishness. I, and I know he's wrong. Mm-hmm. And I did, did not know that he said that. This wasn't a plan that we made together. Unlike, um, you know, let's say Ananias and Sapphira. Mm-hmm. They made a plan together. Right. She said this wasn't a joint plan. Right. I'm not on the same team with my mm-hmm. husband here. And then she did align herself with David and opposite his enemies. We read that in 1 Samuel 25, 27 to 31. She offered her gift, and then she acknowledged David's political situation. She said, I know that your enemy's chasing you, and I know that you are in God's bundle of life. That's my Mm -hmm. favorite part of that, as you all know, (laughs) is that God has a bundle, and we are his children, and when we are in his bundle... He puts his everlasting arms around us. I wanted us to read, before we move to number 9, Psalm 141, verse 5. Psalm 141, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Um, I love that because um, here um, it's it's talking about um, the safety of being in his bundle. And when we're in his bundle, we have righteous people who are keeping us accountable. And what does Psalm 141, verse 5 say? It says, Let a righteous man strike me, it is kindness. Let him rebuke me, it is oil for my head. Let my head not refuse it, yet my prayer is continually against their evil deeds. Yeah, what did David do to, when she, when she gave him that advice, he said, and this is the next question, mm-hmm. blessed be God, mm-hmm. blessed be your advice, mm-hmm. and blessed be you. Right. And so... He he said, you're a righteous person. Thank you for hitting me, mm-hmm. like this passage right. says. Right. And let the righteous smite me because it's really a blessing. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's healing when a righteous person comes to you with rebuke, as mm-hmm. she did to him. And I think I asked that question wrong. I said, um, um, on what three things did David pronounce a blessing when he later contacted Abigail? It really was right there. Um, he pronounced a blessing on God on her advice, and on her, I just want to say, mm-hmm. in the spirit of Matthew 18 and Galatians 6, 1, 
I am constantly grateful Mm -hmm. for God and for God's people and for God's people's advice. Mm -hmm. We all in the bundle of life Mm -hmm. depend on those three things. And I bless those three things. Do we have comments? We do not. Ladies, where did you go, Nidra? <laughs> where are you people? Okay, read 2 Kings 4. Two mm-hmm. women in the chapter, and we go to the uh, second woman in the chapter, the woman of Shunem, and she's the one who prepared the place for Elisha the prophet to come and stay every time that he was in their house. Make a long story short, mm-hmm. he um, asked her what she wanted. She said, I don't need anything. I mm-hmm. dwell among my people. I'm happy where I am. Mm-hmm. And he said, um, well, what he said to his servant, well, what do you think we could give her? Because, you know, and his servant said, well, she's pretty old and she doesn't have any children. Mm-hmm. And so they gave her a son. And then you remember, son grew up to be a pretty big boy, was out working, um, got a headache, went back, sat in his mom's lap for a little while and um, died. Mm-hmm. And she was very distraught about that, of course. But sh- her first reaction was to go and put him on that little bed mm-hmm. in Elisha's mm-hmm. little room and then um, to go get Elisha and um, to I, I have to think that in her mind she was thinking um, I didn't ask for a son he gave me a son <laughs> if he could give me a son I think he could raise him up I don't think she lost hope mm-hmm. no she I don't kept think so. saying it is mm-hmm. well which mm-hmm. you said is Shalom uh-huh the Hebrew the word, word is shalom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, how do we know, Holly, that she didn't have a selfish motive in offering hospitality? How do we know that? Um, she declined any praise, and mm-hmm. she asked him in herself. Like, there was no there was no reward for her to, to bring him in. She also declined the reward in mm-hmm. verse 13. Right. How do we know that her hospitality was generous? What words do, in the Bible tell us that? Um, I put verse 8 through 10 that she urged him to come in and eat. And as often as mm-hmm. he passed by. So it was, right. wasn't sometimes. It was every time. Right. And Kaufman said they sought out the opportunity. Mm-hmm. They weren't just, they they were looking for that opportunity. And then I put verse 13 as well because he said, what, what can I give you for all mm-hmm. this care? Right. You've gone overboard, he really said to her, mm-hmm. all this care. Mm-hmm. So I put that too. What was her first instinct when her son died? To put him on the bed and then go find Elisha. Yeah. And what signs of humility are displayed by the woman? Um, I put verse 27, she catches hold of Elisha's feet. And then verse 37, she fell at his feet and bowed. Okay. And I put those, but then I also put that her hospitality in the first place is an unwell thing mm-hmm. to do. Mm-hmm. And so um, I put those things. Now, I, yay, we have just a second. We really don't have a second, <laughs> but we're going to take it to talk just for a minute about Nehemiah, one of the greatest feats of ingenuity in the scriptures. How long did it take him to build that wall? 52 days. 52 days for the part that he built mm-hmm. and the rep. Operations, I guess, mm-hmm. was included in that, I think. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I know that, that that part of the wall that he had to build, build was, um, the part that they found is 30 meters. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was on the, part of the wall was okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Jennifer's got a slide about that. And part of the wall was okay, but it was the eastern corner up there that mm-hmm. was not okay to repair. Right. They couldn't even right. repair it. So they had to rebuild that. And they rebuilt it in 52 days. And mm-hmm. you were saying that that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Because not because because it was really fast for even yeah. our day. But what mm-hmm. what were you saying? Well, I mean, they don't they didn't have any of the tools and the trucks and the cranes and the, you know the mm-hmm. list could go on all the things mm-hmm. that we have today. And to build that big of a of a part back in only fifty two days is really while quite amazing. they had some really fierce yes. enemies too. Yes. So all that is pretty amazing. So I didn't want to leave a study about ingenuity and work without talking a little bit about Nehemiah and you were to read 2, 1 to 7, 5. I did want to go ahead, though, before um, before we leave that. Here, I brought somewhere here. Um, this article that I found, I was reading some online about uh, Nehemiah and the wall. I, you know, we need to remember that it was in the 5th century B.C. following the Babylonian exile, and Nehemiah was a high official. A cupbearer was a high official in the Persian court of King Artaxerxes I. 
and we know from history all this stuff really existed this is this is not mythological people they are mm-hmm. historically um, documented and he was in the capital city of Susa which was 150 miles east of the Tigris River it's in what we call today Iran and so that's where Nehemiah was when he took the cup to um, the king Artaxerxes that morning and he was sad weren't supposed to be sad in the presence of the king and the king said why are you sad and the king liked him he had a good work ethic we know he did already before he even went back to build the wall Mm -hmm. because the king was um patient with him the Mm -hmm. king wanted to know what was wrong with him and the king wanted to help him Mm -hmm. he wouldn't have done that if he'd been a lazy slothful servant right um and i I love it i want to just go ahead and say this too i love it that um prayers punctuate the book of Nehemiah. Mm -hmm. He was working, but he was praying. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I love that uh, the very first of the book Mm -hmm. starts out that way. He's working for the king, but he's begging the king for something. And even while he's begging the king for it, he's also talking to God. Mm -hmm. He was a multitasker, if anybody ever was, because here he is being the cupbearer to the king, asking the king for an extremely important um, a petition he's making to him and at the same time he says he prayed to God do you do that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I do it all the yeah. time if I'm about to say something Just that's say uncomfortable for saying be... Lord please don't me say this the right way I see that help a lot. it to be taken into the heart of this person please mm-hmm. please please Lord and sometimes I just mm-hmm. say on my way up to give a speech that I'm nervous mm-hmm. about giving that's mm-hmm. going to be difficult sometimes I just say Lord help me now Mm -hmm. help me now and Mm -hmm. that's just all I have time to say but I'm going to say that and so Nehemiah was that that kind of prayer he prayed even when he was in the presence of the king there and I love that and then I wanted to go ahead and say before we finish that on November 8th 2007 um, Hebrew University archaeologist Elat Mazar announced the discovery of a 30 meter section of the wall made famous by the biblical account of Nehemiah I hope that you're going to go with us to the Holy Land, to the um, what's known as the Holy Land. No land is holy, but to the Bible Lands. I hope you're going to go with us, and I'm going to ask if we can see this 300-meter section, 30-meter section of that wall of Nehemiah. They're really pretty sure, they think, that that it was that, and I I, I try not to just uh, take everything that I read online for for real, for granted, Mm -hmm. but um, it looks like it because uh, it is in the right place. It is the right size, Mm -hmm. Um, and it was found by mistake because um, there was a stone tower that was decaying um, that was part of a a different dynasty wall, the Mm -hmm. the one that was built in uh, 130 years before Jesus in what's called the Hasmonean dynasty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... That that was that tower was built then, and it was about to fall down. So they went to restructure it and started building under it because it was about to collapse, mm-hmm. and they started finding things. Arrowheads hmm. and pottery, seals, bones of big dogs. They started finding things hmm. in there, and um, they all of these things dated to the Persian period. Mm-hmm. The seal, you know, you can mm-hmm. tell if you find right. a seal, you know mm-hmm. what year it was from. Mm-hmm. So they could tell this was from this period of Artaxerxes and Nehemiah. So mm-hmm. they kept digging, and um, they revised the date of that tower they were trying to shore up mm-hmm. and the wall to the Persian period. And then um, it was contested, but finally um, two eminent Hebrew scholars went, 47 students from the Hebrew University there and their family members visited it. And uh, after viewing it, even those who had said that they didn't think it was that, um, said, well, it appears to be genuinely Nehemiah. And I Hmm. thought that was just um, very interesting, Mm -hmm. something that happened just 11 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I thought Mm -hmm. that was interesting. So... Uh, I, I ask you to find the instances of work I found, um, and I'm not going to do build or prepare or any of those other words, but for work, I found, um, oh, I didn't count them, but I'm going to do three, four, three and four, and you go from there. I got three, okay. five, I got four, six, I got four, 11, I got four, 15, four, 16. 417, 419, 421, 
and 422 and sometimes it's we labored in the work mm-hmm. <laughs> we got a you know mm-hmm. double whammy there so what did you get others i have um 5 16 it says it twice 6 3 it says it twice 6 9 and 6 16 okay for work no i use the esv and 6 14 my god think mm-hmm. on sam ballot and tobiah according to their works so i thought that was interesting that there mm-hmm. were wicked works and um good works so our list are basically... Yeah, my, yeah 416, mine says worked. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to leave that there. Some Ours might differ yeah. a little bit because of version. Mm-hmm. Multitasking, I had two, one to six. Um, serving the king, talking to the king, and praying to God all at the same time. I had 417, one hand was working while one hand was holding a weapon. I had 418, the builders were wearing their swords. And 423, they took the weapons to the water when they washed their clothes. Mm-hmm. I had that I had, one. What else did you I get? had 416 that said um, half of the people were working and half of them had spears. And then I also had I 413. Um, they were just always ready with their swords and spears and bows. So, okay. Yeah. And then by night, I had 112 to 16. They, uh, Nehemiah went around and surveyed the damage and the ruin by night. Why do you think he went by night? Um... You know, I don't know. Just, well, it does say, doesn't it? It says why he did it, doesn't it? I think he... He's, yeah, he just, I don't think he... Well, nobody really knew about it yet, right? Yeah. What they were going to do. Yeah. Yeah. And he, I think he was um, trying not to... Um, maybe part of it mm-hmm. was that he was trying not to um, incite the enemies. Yeah, yeah. And... Um, you know, after all, he is mm-hmm. a governor, but he's mm-hmm. still under Persia. Mm-hmm. And so four, nine then I had, he set a watch by day and night for mm-hmm. the enemies. And 422, the guards at night were workers mm-hmm. by day. Is right. that what you got? Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, that's what I have about Nehemiah. And uh, did you pick a practically speaking yet? Because I haven't gotten to the practically speaking Well, yet. I did taught a ladies' one? Bible class. I taught two you this past month. You did twice. So. Yes, you did. Got it. Okay. Um, <laughs> do all these ladies' days every weekend, does that count as that? Yes. Yes, it does. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. I got it from, yes, you it know, does. right here. <laughs> so um, I, I'm probably going to, before the ladies' day this weekend, I'm probably going to crochet, you know, something mm-hmm. for some family member. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I think that uh, we... We're able to um, cover material mm-hmm. tonight better yeah, we than we, we good. usually we do. Good. So do we have more comments? We do not. Um, Stephanie Vick just said thank you for all the nuggets no, that we were given. thank you mm-hmm. for, um, I, I just want to say before we close with prayer, I'm just um, tremendously encouraged mm-hmm. by you. I, I love it, really love it when we can hear through Digging Deep for Encouragement or through the Facebook page, Digging Deep in God's Word, when we can hear that you're studying, it's a it's a great encouragement mm-hmm. to, I know it's a great encouragement to Jennifer. Sometimes when I get a note um, that's just to me, mm-hmm. I'll forward it on over to Jennifer because she works really hard doing mm-hmm. our tech all the time. Mm-hmm. And, and it's very encouraging to know that um, people are participating. My husband's mm-hmm. in a meeting this week at a small congregation over in Georgia And on Sunday, he called and he said, they're doing digging deep. And when that happens, it's extremely encouraging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have people for sure in New Zealand, in Australia, in the Bahamas now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is in in South America, some parts of South America and in Canada, Mm -hmm. at least those places. And it does my heart a great amount of good to know, you know, we say, well, it's a small world inside the church. It's really small Mm -hmm. inside our Digging Deep group. Mm -hmm. It's a great fellowship. It's Mm -hmm. a great uh, way that people on opposite sides of the planet can continue to encourage each other. Mm -hmm. And I know that when my grandmother was um, a young mom and a a young grandmother studying her Bible, she didn't have that. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so that's a great uh, blessing that we have to encourage one another, to grow together i believe we grow exponentially when we share the the mm-hmm. study with other mm-hmm. people oh yeah so it, it it makes me very happy and i want to thank you for that what I other have, comments um, just one more nehemiah also made me think of galatians 6 9 and i has i had that on my list too um and be because it says that not to grow weary in good works 
And then, you know, that's followed by the armor of God, which we've talked about last year. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't this year, was it? It was last year. Know. But um, anyway, you know, and I, that reminded me of, of the multitasking that they did, too. They were always mm-hmm. ready. But mm-hmm. um, she said that, and then... Um, First Peter 5, 8, about being sober and vigilant. That's a very good verse to go with that. Mm-hmm. And when we are be busy doing God's work, the devil will try to stop us from doing things like with things like fatigue, fear, or circumstances. But he didn't let any of that get in his way. Who said that? Um, Pam. It just says Pam. That is that is so, mm-hmm. so true. I thought it was going to be mm-hmm. Nidra, who just has six <laughs> kids and who, who's been tired a lot lately. But um, I... It is true. When we Mm -hmm. are on every hand working in the Lord's kingdom, Mm -hmm. he'll try to get us with Mm -hmm. all of those things. Fear and especially fatigue. Time. And Uh, and, and it's more time. Yeah. I mean, it's giving more time. Yeah. So anyway, this this has been good. I'm Mm -hmm. grateful. We'll look forward to What's our study about even next time? Let's turn the page and look. Faith. Escape by faith. So we did works this time. We're going to do faith. Next time, it'll be a great study, and I will look forward to, what did we say? We said May 29th. Yes. Kids will be out of school, for those of you who are taking a summer break, probably by that time. Mm-hmm. And um, so you'll pull your hair out trying to get mm-hmm. your study done. Okay. But um, I hope you all get it done, <laughs> and let's bow together now, and we will be finished. Father, you're so good to us as your daughters, and we are so very thankful We are contrite and we want to approach you humbly because we know that we have nothing with which to recommend ourselves. We could keep every commandment that you've given us, but yet if we sin once, we are guilty of all and at our very best, we are filthy rags, and we know that we cannot recommend ourselves with our works, and yet we know that you require them, and we know that in your infinite wisdom, you have made them a part of the way that we enter your kingdom and the way that we live our lives faithfully before you, and that you've required certain works in order for our sins to be washed away, not works of which we ever could boast, but works to which we humbly submit in really a, um, an, a, an, a, an expression, Father, that we understand your will for us and that we will never get in your face and say, I refuse to do that. We are always going to to do our very best to submit to every command that you've given us and then know that the blood of your son Jesus is big enough to forgive, to cleanse, to cover those areas in which we inevitably will be lacking before you. We're so thankful that we're not dependent on the blood of bulls and goats, which would have to be offered over and over and over again, but that Jesus, that one day on Calvary, suspended between heaven and earth for those six hours, gave his life blood, the blood of the perfect lamb, so that we could one day be together around your throne. Help us, Father, as wives, as mothers, as daughters. Help us as sisters in the kingdom. Help us, Father, to influence each other for the maximum potential good that we can offer throughout our lives still small though and we're so thankful that we can depend on the blood of your son and it's through that blood and through him that we pray amen